so the thing is that now you have all the resources and all the sources to change uh, the grammars that I said. What I said when I say grammar, it is the uh, the system that does the rhetorical parsing, and this rhetorical parsing is is uh, built on uh, on the basis of a framework of an analysis framework that is called concept matching. And in order for you to understand what is going on in what, what actually this analysis is and how you can change it, you need to understand what concept matching is. So before speaking of the lexicon files, I will speak briefly about concept matching. And at any time when you uh, uh, have a question, please don't hesitate to, to interrupt me. So again, concept matching, this is an analysis framework for identifying rhetorically salient sentences, and I will define what rhetorical salient sentences are, through patterns of concepts. This is the framework, the analysis framework, and there is also um, a method for implementing this framework to NLP systems that automatically detect those sentences. Now, there might be several ways of, of, of implementing this NLP system. The way I did is one way, it could be implemented in other ways as well, but what we have now is the system that I implemented. So you have to be very careful to know that the rhetorical tags are to be associated with predefined patterns and these patterns constitute the definition of the words that are the actual tags. So this is why the words are, well, should be the most uh, uh, understandable or comprehensible possible, but still there is a, 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 an underlying understanding that is needed because it is not their usual sense that they are used in, but they, they should still mean something. So what do they mean? So um, we start from this concept of rhetorical move that was coined by Suez in, in genre studies, where he uh, uh, defined a rhetorical move as a recurrent uh, um, communicate, communicative intent in specific genres. We can, we can see what, what kinds of com communicative intents come up for a strategy to communicate in the most effective way. But in, in this sense, um, every sentence of, uh, of, of, of for, so uh, a research article is a, is a well-defined rhetorical genre and Swayze worked primarily on this genre in order in, for uh, pedagogical purposes to teach people how to speak this research article language. And in a research article, every, each sentence needs to have a rhetorical role. And in, in, in Sway's system, and the, uh, one of the most important parts of Sway's uh, system is the CARS model, which is a model for, uh, for the introduction parts of research articles, where he distinguishes between moves, uh, we, which, which he defines through um, a uh, metaphor of uh, making a nest for a bird, establishing a territory, establishing a niche, niece occupying the niche. But what is more important is the steps how, what are the rhetorical um, means by which you can, uh, you, 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 you can um, um, execute or perform these uh, moves. And so in, 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 in Sway's model, every, each sentence can be assigned to one of the steps because each sentence has a rhetorical um, uh, uh, importance for, for, for the uh, strategy. But uh, some of the sentences stand out and uh, they clearly express rhetorical intent. And these sentences we call the rhetorical salient sentences. And these sentences contain some specific indicators of these rhetorical intents. 
some other languages also contain some uh, indicators of rhetorical intent, but these sentences contain some patterns that I identified as rhetorical patterns and which are other school like functional language or meta discourse, but uh, other people don't model this. And uh, I came up with a model that, that, um, that defines these rhetorical uh, uh, salient sentences. And with Elena now, we are trying to see what differentiates these sentences from the other sentences that, that have less indicators of the rhetorical moves and what makes it that these sentences stand, up, stand out. And if, and if you look at this text here, you see that every sentence is assigned to a rhetorical move, but in, in, in the sentences where you have these contrasting ideas, summary, emphasis, background, there you, there you have this rhetorical, these rhetorical formulas that however remains unknown, we show suggesting a crucial role in the development previously has been shown. Here we show our result pro results provides insight. So if you read only these, you can, you can follow the rhetorical uh, development of the article. The rest is the, the narrative, but they also have roles. Is, is this clear? Yeah. So this is what uh, concept matching um, uh, provides and analyzes. The framework is for finding rhetorical, uh, rhetorically salient sentences. And if, if we uh, show these words to the students, however remains unknown, suggesting a crucial role, uh, so they can learn how to convey these meanings. And, and uh, uh, I think the interest of this method is that uh, there are very many ways of expressing this and, and, and this method allows the um, um, capturing a very wide array of, of such meanings and not only a list of things, but it is, it is a, it is a it, it is a very open system. So let's see how these, uh, these rhetorical formulas, however, remains unknown, our results provide insight, etc. how they are found. This is the, the analysis framework. So here you have these uh, uh, labels, rhetorical labels that, uh, that I gave. Summary, position, surprise, emphasis, trend, open question, contrast, background, and novelty. These are the ones that are used right now, but this is by no means uh, uh, a, a closed list, and this can be changed and, and, it, and, and it can evolve according to uh, the needs. For example, in the re uh, reflective uh, uh, puzzle, we came up with other tags like this, and we matched uh, the concepts against some other uh, rhetorical text. So now, the, wh wh what I will show is the, um, uh, is actually the model. Uh, the model is based on, 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 on concepts. I, I will show how. And these, th so we are not at the linguistic level now, we are at a conceptual level. So in the middle, there is the concept of some kind of idea. But this is, this is um, something very, very general. So idea is anything that is related to a theory, that is related to thinking, and uh, it, 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 everything that it is in, in, in this, uh, in, in, in this uh, semantic field. And if there is a contrast with another idea, then it can be either contrast and open question. So here you can have two tags related here in, in this uh, uh, model uh, with, with the two same concepts because this is a simplified uh, representation because uh, in, in, uh, within idea there are some sub-concepts. For example, there, there, there is a concept that is more related to knowledge and if we don't know something, then it is an open question. 
right? Open question and contrast are very close to each other. And then a background is when you have a past or general idea. It's, uni it's, it's universally accepted or it's previously known. So background is not anything that refers to previous work. It could also be, uh, we could also capture this in another way. Because it, 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 so we, we capture the sentences when the rhetoric, the, 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 the part of the sentence contains this rhetorical language, which can be called meta discourse or functional language, which is not the case, the case. in other sentences. Fun? Agnes, did you, say, did you say background has got nothing to do with previous work? No, 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 I didn't say that. I, I said that it is, no, no, sorry, I, I didn't express myself well. I wanted to say that when a writer says that X, Y wrote this, this is also background knowledge, but this is not captured by a rhetorically salient expression in this, in this uh, system. Here, it, 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 it is only when you say that previous work said, for example, or previous work, uh, we read previous work about. It, 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 it doesn't mean that you need to do this. It's, it, 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 it is then up to the tool to see if this is a, this is a, a useful uh, label or not. I don't say that it is useful. I, I myself, I don't say. Uh, it, is, it, 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 it has proved to be useful for some things, right? Uh, then if, if um, a, a new idea, if you have a, a new and idea together related to each other, then it is novelty. And then a deictic, it is this, for example, or my, or, or uh, the author of this, or this article. So if there is this article, it is related to a summary. Then, and it, it is the same with the other. So you would always need to have one concept like attitude, surprise, importance, grow, related to an idea. And I will show in the sentences how, how it is instantiated. Okay. So, so, um, uh, so here you see that the system includes some, some subclasses, I already said. So this is a very simplified, simplified representation. Uh, uh, of concepts and, and also there are disamb disambiguation rules because um, sometimes, sometimes, because some words, for, exa for example, challenge. Challenge is, 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 is a contrast word, but it is very, very often used in, in biological articles as a term, as a term, terminology for challenge or issue. We saw it in, 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 in the legal language. So you need to, to uh, disambiguate when this is a keyword for concept matching and when not. So this is why you need to be careful when you add a new word, you need to see if this word, if there is a potential of this word to be ambiguous or not. Then, uh, so here in this representation, so you see the white boxes are concepts and the blue boxes are rhetorical, well, moves, but, uh, it is a special meaning of rhetorical move. It, it is not in the sense of of, uh, of, of, of of sways. And the arrows represent relationships. So this is a very, very high level representation of the system. So now, the, the, what is the implementation? And I implemented it in a rule-based system, but it could also be implemented in a, in a, in a machine learning system. So in my system, there are, so these concept patterns are mapped into linguistic realizations. The concepts are mapped to features in the system, and I will show you how. The patterns to co-occurrence rules, and the relationships to syntactic relationships, dependencies. And the concepts and the patterns are implemented using the Stanford parser now in the new system. Before, everything was done by XIP, and now it is done jointly with the Stanford parser plus Atenor that Claude Roux um, developed, and the relationships and syntactic dependencies are provided by the Stanford parser. So 
now I give you a very, very simplified, uh, so in a simplified way, how uh, a sentence is getting labeled. So here you have a sentence, an input sentence, which says it is useful to analyze critically, blah, 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 and evaluate whether, what we need to grasp here is analyze critically because analyze is a word that conveys an idea that instantiates the concept of a, an idea and critically is a contra contra contrast here. So what does the Stanford parser give? The output is a syntactic dependency that there is a dependency between analyze and critically and it is an adver adverbial modifier. But for us, the kind of the dependency is not important. And the, well, this is the essence of the system that we owe, that, that we, we are looking for expressions that are coherent. And this coherence is, is um, uh, instantiated by syntactic dependencies in the sentences. And this is provided by the parser, the Stanford parser. Now, we have the lexicon. And in the lexicon, we give um, the we assign the the concept features to uh, to keywords which we uh, uh, get by different means. And here you see uh, the word analyze and critically. Actually, well, I will explain it later when we speak about the lexicon uh, what this is exactly. And here you see here you assign. Uh, features to it to analyze mental and KSW and uh, there there are several features. So the main features are uh, the idea feature here is mental. It is a subclass of idea and then contrast is cont and then a KSW is assigned to every word. It means uh, what, what does it mean? Uh, uh, key sentence word, it, uh, it meant at the beginning. And then there are some other features that you don't understand now, which you, you would need to understand if you uh, developed a grammar. And uh, this would be very important in this, in, in, in this case, because developing the grammar, um, it is mapping the, 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 this, uh, this system to the linguistic realization. Which, which needs some linguistic knowledge. And, um, and, and this is why some, some other um, uh, features are also assigned, but you, 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 you don't need to understand this at this point. And then, uh, so here you see um, uh, how the, um, so, so how, how I make it's possible that this dependency, this, this uh, analyze critically, can be tagged as a salient dependency. Here you have, um, so, th so this comes from the dependency anakif uh, file, where the very, very first rule is that, um, that all, all the dependencies where both words have, uh, are keywords in the system, they get a, a tag, you see. Um, so I, I call it a key sentence words dependency. So every dependency, uh, this, this dependency here, because both of its uh, arguments are key sentence words, they are a key sentence word dependency, right? And then uh, I give, uh, I, 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 I assign a, a tag to them, depending on the tags of the words, the tags, I mean the features of the words inside the dependency. So in, 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 so in the first line of these, of, 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 of this, um, of the dependency on a uh, example means that the, the dollar one means that if you have any dependency where the first argument is a key, key sentence word and the second argument as well, then it should be a key sentence word dependency. And this is, this is Etonor that allows me to do this. And then a second, uh, uh, this, a second step is that if you have a key sentence word dependency where the first argument is mental, then 
you assign a feature to this dependency as mental. And if you have a dependency, the, the third line is if you have a dependency where the second line is contrast, then the dependency itself will get the, uh, the, the feature contrast. And in this case, this dependency will get uh, the features both mental and contrast. And this will be enough for me to, uh, to tag it as a, uh, as a contrast sentence. So here you see uh, that this, this is the Ettinger output. It is a key sentence word dependency with mental and contrast. This analyze critically. And then I say, if, if I have a sentence where, uh, uh, where um, uh, you, you have, um, uh, okay, here, here I, I, I think I skipped, uh, I skipped uh, a step. So first I, 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 I mark which are imp sent is the important sentences. And then uh, the important sentences uh, are the ones that, um, that uh, that associate uh, that uh, instantiate the the patterns the the concept patterns and if if I have uh, important sentences then I give them their uh, tags mental and contrast and 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 uh, and then I, I I assign to the sentence uh, a tag as well so it is a cascade first I assign features to the words then to the dependencies and then to the sentences. Is this clear? Yeah. 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 So, so in Ettinger, uh, what what are the files that are in Ettinger? So the first file is the, the most uh, the, the, the there is a configuration file where you have all where you have the list of the files that are used in the system. So first we have. Uh, uh, the dependency dependency file. We, uh, we, we there, there are several of them, because um, well, I, I cannot explain everything now. Uh, the most important well, it's not the most important one, but the final one is the dependency uh, Anna Keith, where um, uh, I showed uh, uh, what kinds of things are done. In the previous ones, there are mainly uh, disambiguation rules and uh, assignment of features to words where, the, where these features are assigned in a certain context. And then you have the lexicon files. Uh, here you have, uh, there is just one lexicon file here. And in the lexicon file, which is also important for you to know for editing lexicon files, we uh, uh, put words which are not very much contextually defined, which are which which usually are 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 not so uh, ambiguous. But sometimes ambiguity is treated with with special features. And then there is a feature file where we declare what the features are. We tell the systems that these things are features. So these are the three kinds of files here. And then uh, you can edit the files with any text editor, but don't use Word, for example, because you, you, you need very simple things because it's only the, uh, uh, th there is no formatting here. And then uh, it is also important to know that you can add as many files as you like. So for example, if you word in, work independently, you can each of you add files and, and, and build your own systems. And it's, 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 it's very much better to keep the system modular. So if it is possible, you can leave the actual system as it is now, unless there are bugs, which is possible, which is very much possible. <laughs> but actually I, I, I analyzed, I, 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 I haven't sent you, Simon, I, I analyzed the output of the new Ettinger output of, of uh, the, the corpus that you said. I looked closely at it and I find it's really quite good. I, I'm, I'm really satisfied. I didn't find a lot of bugs, really. Yeah. And we, we, have, we have yet to put in the new files you sent us, Agnes. Okay. We, have but, not but, put, but, but, we haven't yes, put them in yet. It, is, it was the new one, right? No. Um, well, Agnes, you sent, me, you sent me some new grammar files for the analytical parsing. 
No, I'm talking with this uh, to Simon Knight. You sent me uh, a file, right? With analysis. I don't know which version of, <laughs> of the password. <laughs> because it seemed to me it was the, uh, you didn't use the, the last, you didn't see the Atenor version at all? Uh, it, I mean, it is a, it's an Athenor version, one of them, but I don't know. I, 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 I think I've got just one. I, I mean, uh, maybe I sent before, but I think it is the last one because, okay. well, I think, uh, anyway, we can, we can, we can see it, this offline, <laughs> but I, I was, I was satisfied with it. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so, so is this clear so far? Yeah. So, uh, with the files uh, on the previous slide, yes. is that how we would, for example, build up um, if we wanted another type of rhetorical parser in the same way as you have the uh, reflective and analytical? We would do it by creating different file versions that would contain the rules and the languages. Yeah. Yeah, if you choose to do this. Sure, yeah. If you choose to, to go about this it, it, this way. Okay. Right? Okay, yes. So, some examples. I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I, I don't know what time it is. Uh, yes, okay, it's okay. So, um, uh, I, 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 I have here an example here for each, uh, each category which is here for reference as well, for you to see what kinds of things belong here. And uh, uh, we can, we, I, I, I don't want to go through it uh, one by one, just to show you that here you have background knowledge, which is recent studies indicate previously proposed or universally accepted. But, uh, but it, it, it is interesting. This, this uh, example is interesting. I don't know if it is Sophie or Shibani who, 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 uh, who thought that this one was background, which I say, right, it is background, according to flash, Eurobarometer, uh, the majority, etc. Et so this, it is background knowledge, but this is not, uh, this is not, first, it is not a reference to a research article at all. So it is some other thing. It is, it is, a, it is reference to some previous knowledge, but it's not, not research knowledge or, yeah. It, 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 and uh, so, so, so this, this doesn't uh, fall in this at all. Okay. Will you see why? Yeah, now that I can see the slide and how you pointed it out, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then contrasting ideas, well, this is a very nice pattern because it can be also uh, more complex and more interesting. So this is the far, <laughs> the, the, the most interesting one uh, because, well, these three examples I use all the time. And there, there are other examples as well, but, but they are really, really nice that you see that uh, uh, so different uh, expressions uh, mean exactly the same thing that the, the, the new idea is in contrast in some, with some general idea that an, an, auto, an orthodox view resolves apparent paradoxes in contrast with previous hypotheses and inconsistent with past findings. You see very clearly how, the, how it is the instantiation of these different concepts that uh, uh, amounts to the meaning of contrasting ideas. And so for example, here it's interesting. However, in spite of the concern consumers express, the level of uh, food waste continues to be very high. It's true that there is a contrast, but not in ideas. Well, I mean ideas of consumers, but not of the researchers. It is not a contrast in researchers' ideas. So it is, there is, however, there is in spite of, there is concern, but it is not a contrasting idea in the sense that it, 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 it is, this is not a rhetorical expression to, uh, 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 to, uh, to express that uh, you come up now with a new idea, right? That, that there is in, in, in the development of the ideas of, uh, 
uh, of a theory of a model, there is some. Oh no. Okay, some, so some, some, something something that is contrasting. It so is. I, yeah. So if we just take that example, okay, yeah. as you say, there is a contrast, um, mm -hmm. but it this would not be picked up. Uh, in the parser, simply because of the kind of language that's being used? No. It, well, I mean, it's not the language, but it's what the language expresses. It does not express what I am looking for. It says that the, the consumers express concern. Now, it doesn't say that this is a research problem for me. So, um, I, I agree that we probably wouldn't want these kind of sentences highlighted anyway because as you say they don't meet the sorts of things we're looking for but to be clear so the the contrast is there uh, we have both however and in spite of um, the the sort of past and general notion um, so something continues to be but what's lacking here as far as I understand what you're saying is that um, there's no idea instantiated right. so right if, if that sentence said, however, in spite of the reported uh, finding that uh, consumers ex express concern, the level of food weight continues to be high, would that be a contrast sentence, do you think? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But this doesn't mean, so it, it, this means that, well, this, this contrasting idea hasn't be, hasn't been made clear yeah. in the sentence. So there is no rhetorically uh, clear, explicit meaning that, the, uh, uh, that there is a contrasting idea, which would be, which is important in research articles. But this, it doesn't mean that this sentence couldn't um, um, contribute to the rhetorical move of, uh, of, of a niche or anything, mm. because, because it can be that the readers understand that this concern that consumers express, it is a research problem. Right. But it is not said. And we are, we are talking about the clarity of the, of, 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 of the expression in the research articles. So, I, I, I don't claim that this sentence is bad or something is lacking. No, it sure. is lacking for, 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 for the parser. And in, in a research article, you should, I think, at some point, uh, write out clearly uh, this rhetorical content. I, I, I mean, this is what people are looking for. I'm in part thinking, I mean, so there's uh, lots of things going on there. Um, one is that, um, yeah, we did, we want them to be clear and it's about the specific things that we're looking for. Um, I'm also thinking about the potential for the sort of, uh, near miss move, which I think we've talked about before that, which, which move, um, so the idea that one way that we can give feedback is to be able to say, well, hey, you've got two of the constituent components for a contrast mm -hmm. move here, but it's actually not clear what the idea is in this case. Right. That's, I mean, this is a really nice example to illustrate that, and it may well be the case that if we look at a whole corpus that um, it would be harder for us to find more examples like that. So we'd need to mm -hmm. explore. But that seems to me to be quite a powerful potential for um, us increasing our understanding of how these rules work um, and then how we can use them to kind of build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it's, it's very interesting. We are um, uh, analyzing a, a corpus with Elena mm. and uh, uh, we can see that the highlighted sentences are at the beginning, at the end of paragraphs. And this is very interesting because it is, it means that when you introduce something or when you end something, then you sum up. These um, uh, patterns are summing up some, uh, be because it is the author's voice here. Yeah. It says that you say, that I say, 
that it is uh, inconsistent with past finding, and the rest is the content. Right? So let's go on. Uh, then novelty is new idea, new insights provide evidence or suggest a new approach or results define a novel role. So here again, it is made clear that the author thinks that something is new. Then uh, an open question, well, uh, uh, originally this was called, uh, don't know, we don't know. It is the sentences that uh, uh, studies have done something, but little is known. Or although something is detected, the role is elusive. And here you see that the elements in these um, in the, uh, instantiated concepts are far from each other in the sentences, but still they are coherent through the, uh, the syntactic dependencies. Because if we didn't take into consideration the linguistic, the, the syntactic dependencies, we could get any, any kinds of sentences. They, 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 they wouldn't be as precise as these. So data is insufficient to conclude. Or here, although blah, 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 detected, role elusive. It is, it, it, it is a very clear pattern, right? Then uh, the trend is that something with, respect to the idea is growing, emerging as a promising approach, our understanding has grown, or although recently identified, this doesn't belong here, provided insight, growing recognition. So you need to have some, some, so, something that is growing with respect to an idea. And then this, um, well, when I write here any concept, that means that uh, sometimes, um, uh, the, uh, the two concepts are not enough to identify the rhetorical salience. There, there need to be some other concepts uh, or concept pairs in the sentences, and, and these are also defined in the rules. So, for example, in, in, in this one, which, which was all, again one of Shibane's or, or Sophie's examples, in the legal world, the growing area of cyber crime, meta, cyber crime metadata and privacy laws all affirm the idea. But, so there is an idea that is affirmed, but it is, it is the growing area of cybercrime. So, uh, well, it, 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 it may be that it is a research area, but it is not sure. It is, in, in this sentence, uh, this sentence is not selected because, uh, well, you, because the, the fact that there is more cyber crime, the, the, it is a fact. It is not a, a, a growing uh, tendency, a trend in ideas. Is this clear? Oh. Yeah, that's one, that's one of the things that... Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's like a definition of what an idea is, because... Well, that's a very good question. So an idea, um, it is, it is I, 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 the best I can say now is the, uh, the semantic, um, uh, yeah, it, it is words that express, I mean, idea is a concept and it is instantiated by words. And every time all the concepts are instantiated by specific words or expressions. And it is actually the list of these words which are related to some kind of, 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 of thinking. Well, it is not very precise, but uh, uh, there, is a, uh, there is a student, uh, an, a, 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 a previous student who wrote a whole PhD about this, how these concepts are, um, uh, can be defined, but it is in French. And she, uh, she worked out, uh, built on linguistic theories uh, or, and linguistic approaches, how to define more exactly what it is. But uh, so it is, it is words that are related to uh, thinking and ideas. And, and if you look at the, the list that is in the, uh, the vocabulary, in, in the lexicon, you, you look at the text scope and mental, 
and PUBL publication. There are three sub main subclasses of, uh, of this idea. It is everything that is, it is words that are related to thinking or to theories or the scope of research or publications or knowledge. Is, is, is that satisfactory to you? Um. I was just thinking like cyber crime could be one of that which relates to a theory or research. But it's it, well, you are absolutely right, but you, we, we need to make a difference. Cyber crime is not itself. It can imply there are, and, and this is also what we are analyzing with Elena and it's very interesting. Sometimes the, the, uh, the concepts are not instantiated, but implied. And then uh, we need to think what to do about this. Cybercrime is a, a phenomenon. It's not a, it's not an idea, right? Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it 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 can it can imply that uh, research on cybercrime, it can, but it is not said. At this point, we only capture what actually is said. Okay, so in this right? but, but it, it, it is not easy. It is not easy to understand. This is why it is important to understand exactly what is going on and to make the difference between implication and actual uh, lexical meaning. We are only speaking of words whose lexical meaning is related to thinking. Okay, so in this case, if we have the student is talking about a uh, legal world, the growing area of uh, research in cybercrime, then would that be an idea if they say? Yes, if, if it would be in le the legal world, the growing research on cybercrime, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. But, and sometimes, sometimes the, the people don't, don't write precisely. Maybe, maybe this author wanted to write this. But it is not precise. It, it, it speaks about cybercrime and not a, a, about research on cybercrime. Right, so it might say the growing research into the growing scholarship of the growing theorization of, and then basically the question is, are those words in the, the lexicon file? Exactly. As, as exactly. idea, as idea words, and if, if we yeah. find if we find that they're not, then we can add those. Right. This is this is what I will show in in in, in, yeah. in the lexicon. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and and if we found that there was a word that was not being picked up, and we thought that is essentially a synonym for scholarship, and scholarship was in the lexicon file, then we could just duplicate the line on scholarship and change the word. It is exactly this. This is exactly what I'm going to show. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Okay. Exactly. Because there is now uh, uh, an infrastructure for every word that is similar to work in, in, in the same way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So then he, we come to this emphasis and, um, and position things which are a little bit, uh, well, uh, well, uh, the, the difference between the two is not very clear for me. Uh, so importance is more, is more, uh, is, is clearer because it's importance and, and, and crucial. Well, if valuable is importance or position, I'm, uh, well, actually you can, you can, you can change or you can do things about this because this is, this, this, this is up to your appreciation. If, because if something is valuable, it is important. It is, it, it is, it is, it, it is a little bit subjective. So you have provided important advances or knowledge is crucial. I tag it as importance, but for example, valuable information, uh, it is importance also here. But what, what we called position can, came for, from a thing that I called attitude, that it is exciting. So uh, I, I wanted to, I, I wanted to, uh, uh, to, to, to signal if there is something that stands out for, 
for the author. So if the author has a specific attitude towards this, uh, exciting discoveries. He finds that it is exciting. It is not important, but it is his attitude that it is exciting. And the study theory aroused concern. Uh, this is not importance either, but it is a kind of um, position as well. It's, it's important that, um, or attitude, that, that in, you will see that in the lexicon, for one concept, you will have a very different different uh, parts of speech. That is, you will find verbs and nouns or adverbs, even prepositions that instantiate a, a, a concept. And then a compelling argument. Compelling, it is, by the way, it is both contrast and, and, uh, and attitude. And, and it's also important that one word, the same word, can, can be assigned to different concepts. Because, because it means uh, more uh, complex things. So for example, when uh, again, uh, it was suggested that in this paper, we argue that modern agricultural innovation economics has failed to develop much beyond the market failure for public science approach. Uh, it can maybe uh, um, uh, considered as a position of an author, but it doesn't instantiate this, this position pattern. Okay. There, there is nothing Can in it. it. Pardon? Pardon? So posi position, I, we very, very rarely see position in any of our parsing. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, think, yeah. I, 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 I assume that we are able to detect that. We will have to test it on these examples. But from what you're saying, you're basically, uh, it's when the author um, evaluates an idea uh, as compelling or a discovery right. as exciting. Right. Uh, right. Or as expressing concern. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I understand a little better what that is about now. I, I can't remember yeah. seeing this very often though. Yeah, because there are not very many words in this in this concept that instantiate this concept, and it depends on the maybe it depends on the uh, on the, uh, the domain as well. I I don't know. Then uh, and, and 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 often you have both importance and and uh, position because there are words that have both tags that I gave both tags, but. Uh, you, you see, it is a human activity uh, assigning, uh, assigning uh, a tag to a word. And then surprise, it is, there, there, is not very there are not very many surprise sentences either. So we recently observed and surprisingly, and here in this case where there is a, uh, a note here that in case a constituent concept is instantiated by an adverb, like surprisingly, uh, then uh, we we don't uh, we don't uh, require a syntactic link because just because the parser doesn't give one. So then we it, it doesn't relate. The parsers usually don't relate the or they do sometimes but not always relate these words to uh, to other words in the sentences because it is difficult because it is it is actually they sometimes they modify the whole sentence. And then the, the pauses cannot do this, and so uh, if, if 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 a sentence has surprisingly, then it also needs to have another um, uh, pattern, like we recently observed, right? Other other patterns in relationship, uh, and we have identified unusual or recent discoveries suggest intriguing roles. So when uh, the surprise is a, is, a, is an important element as well. And then the summary is, uh, is, 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 is basically depends on the deictic and idea, like the goal of this study. Here we show our results indicate. So, but there are two basic uh, summary um, um, patterns. This deictic, which, which means that I show something in this article. It can be also the following or the previous uh, chapter, like this, like uh, things like this. But then I have a looser 
um, pattern as well, which is um, a, 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 just just two idea, one publication and one mental word. The goal of the study was to investigate because here it is completely ambiguous if it is this um, uh, this article that the author speaks about or another article. And if, if this is the case, if there is this loose pattern, then I gave uh, the, the other tag any author. So it can be any author. I don't know if it is the author of the article, because if, if it says this article says, it is usually <coughs> his own article, usually. It is not necessarily, but usually. But in these cases, the article shows or the play paper clearly indicates. Yeah, Simon, you want to say something? That's all right, finish your sentence. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, you can choose not to uh, not to take these sentences because it 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 it, it gives way to uh, to ambiguity. But if you don't, then you miss a lot as well, the the real ones as well. Yeah, right. Um, you said there are three kinds of ideas: publication, mental, and scope. Can and you just also, yeah, yeah. That was it, and scope, yeah? Can yeah, you say right. a bit the, more the, about... Sorry, sorry, sorry uh, Simon. Uh, these are the three basic types, and then there are still some other sub... Yes? Just say a bit more about scope. Well, scope is like theory and research and uh, uh, mechanism, everything that, 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 that relates to the... Uh, to the product of the ideas. Is, is that... Is that, is that is a... Okay, it's a funny word to use. Yeah, well, I, 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 I use it, but you know, I, I made this up. It is uh, the scope of the research. I mean, uh, maybe it's not a good one. <laughs> maybe you, you, you can cha change it. If you so want. we're actually talking about the, the sort of... Um, intellectual contributions like theories, mechanisms, methodology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very, well, I think, I think this would be very interesting work. I mean, what, what this uh, student did in French to, to really ap apply these and, and uh, define these categories really well. Okay. Yes. Th th this hasn't really been done. The definition for the time being, it is, it is the list. Okay, so uh, so this is the end of this one of the the uh, the introduction, which uh, uh, took quite some time, but I think it is important. And then we can go on to the lexicons, which will be easier actually. <laughs> but I, I I think it was necessary for this, right? Yeah, and it made it much clearer. Oh, oh I'm I'm glad. And Andy, if, if you have any uh, questions later, and if you have some some doubts, just just let me know. So let me show you the other one. Team sharing has stopped. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now you need to. I have to uh, share it again. Choose choose the other okay. file. Yeah. Okay. Right, and this is where we get a little bit more into the hands-on of. Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. For for the lexic for modifying lexicon files, but yeah. uh, so this will only allow you to uh, to add a word which has a synonym in the lexicon already, or some 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 other type as well. Uh, you 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 will see. Okay, so here is the beginning of the lexicon file. So what you see in the lexicon, in each line, there is one word. Then if you have multi-word expressions, then you, you have to deal, you cannot deal with it in the lexicon file. In the lexicon file, you can only, only uh, um, uh, put uh, individual words. So. The first thing is where you see address. Address, actually, it, we call it a lemma because it is the dictionary form of a word. It is, it, uh, it will match. So if, if you, 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 you have to put in here the dictionary form of the words, 
not every form, uh, because it, it will match any form of, of, of this word address. It will form, it will match addresses, addressed or addressing. But if you want to have, uh, I, I forgot, uh, oh no, no, I didn't forget. And uh, so address is, is um, ambiguous. It could be a verb or a noun. So you need to specify that address, we address this question, this is a keyword, but uh, the, uh, his address is in London is not a keyword because address there is a noun. So you need to specify that you only want um, the, 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 the word to be a verb and you can do it. And you can also always copy the other words. Yeah. Here you, so when, when you have a condition on the lemma, then you have to put it uh, between brack, uh, brackets after the lemma. And then you say that it equals to these uh, features, which is mental and pub publication, because this article addresses in this uh, sense, it, 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 it refers to the publication and it will allow us to find uh, um, the summary sentences. And, uh, and also knowledge words, for example, we didn't address this problem and then it, 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 it will um, uh, contribute to the, to the open questions as well and to other sentences as well. And also to every word, don't forget to put the um, key sentence word, except for the deictic. The deictic is not one, is, is, it doesn't have one, but you always have to be careful when you add a word to do exactly as is done in the, uh, in the similar word. And then, uh, so here in, 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 in green, you have the part of speech, it, which, which I said, the tag is only associated with the lemma. If in the text it is tagged the, by, actually it is tagged by the Stanford parser. Of course, in this phase, we have to do with the parser and in the parser, there will be error. So the, the analysis will not always be correct. And uh, with the part of speech specified by, uh, by, by the Stanford parser. And then in, 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 in red, you have the constituent concepts and other features. So this is, this is uh, the syntax of the lexicon file, right? Can you? Now, how, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the screenshot which shows advanced noun mm -hmm. can you just talk us through that one because it looks it's got some interesting things in it advanced noun to to merge advanced uh, uh, th uh, this ad advanced noun ah too much oh ah, yes <laughs> well these are features uh, uh too much is, is 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 in french and it means that if so there is a feature but these features actually uh, <laughs> uh, have been used in zip and have been uh, implemented here as well. It, it is uh, actually, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I need, I mean, the, so this introduction cannot cover everything. Okay. <laughs> uh, it, is, it, 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 it is our feature from here, from Xerox, uh, meaning that we mark words that are only, uh, 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 big letters, because if 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 it is only two two, uh, it, it means that all um, capital letters. It means all capital. Ah. And if it is in all capital letters, and and uh, and the tilde means that not. It shouldn't be all capitals because if it is advanced or advanced uh, something, it can be the name of a of of, of a of an organization or something, and we don't want that. If it is a proper name, we don't want it to be a keyword. Got it, got it. So that's it. <laughs> but you know, there are many tags that wouldn't, it, it, it all need to be under, but you know, it's, uh, the understanding comes with using the system. You don't have to go and study it and it, it, you use, you see examples and you, you learn it. I mean, a, a person who, who has some, uh, some, uh, um, so practice in analysis uh, can, can learn it quite quickly. It's not very complicated.
but there are some <laughs> some some things. Yes. So, shall I go on? So, how to add a new lemma to the lexicon? Now, here we have a sentence uh, where we have the the mechanism have not been fully understood, and uh, this sentence is not captured. And we can think that this should be a contrast because mechanism is 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 is, is, is the product of an idea. Is it's 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 it, it can be the because the mechanism is in in this case the mechanism responsible for the improvements has not have not been uh, fully understood. It is it 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 is a mental construct. This mechanism it is a model. Mechanism can also be something concrete, but not in this case. So we want this, uh, this sentence to be captured because there is the, the we, we can see the, the patterns, mechanisms have not been understood. So what we do here, we need to check the lexicon, but because I don't know also if you have access to all the, the Etener uh, 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 mechanisms. <laughs> Do you I have think, the file? I think, I think we have access to all the files. Um, well, I mean, we can see this. We can, we can see, well, I don't know. Perhaps we don't have access to them all, but I don't know why we would not. We have, we have all the source code. Well, actually, uh, if, if you develop in Atenor, you, you, you need to have the Atenor engine on your computer or on a server and have access to it and also to the files. But uh, uh, so, and you, you need to check the lexicon if all the words are in it. Well, you would think that understand is in it. Uh, you, would, you, you wouldn't even think of, of verifying, of checking this and not as well. But mechanism, you, you can have the idea to check if this is in the lexicon. But actually it is not because it hasn't been added, because it has, hasn't come up, it, 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 it hasn't been seen yet. So then what you should do is, is substitute the missing word with a, if, 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 if you don't have, well, well, you, you substitute the, the missing word with a similar word from the lexicon in the same sentence. For example, you see method and check the output and you check if, but the, the method have, have not been fully understood. This is also a, a good sentence and it is close in meaning and send then you can see, I, 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 I didn't um, uh, copy it here, but actually you do find it. Uh, the, uh, you do find uh, the sentence tagged. The, the, tag, the, the sentence will be tagged if you uh, replace uh, mechanism by method. So if the output is what you expect, and, and I say if it is not, then you need to investigate further, but we cannot go into this now. Uh, the sentence is tagged as C actually in the, in, in the output now. And in this case, you need to add the missing lemma to the lexicon Anna all with the tags of the similar word, as Simon said, exactly. And then you, you will actually get the, the, the right output that you expect. And then there is another example, which is uh, the same. It was, it, it was an example that came from your examples. Uh, the paper we ascertain, we didn't have the word ascertain, it doesn't have a concept tag, then I substitute it with another one like assert, and then uh, you, you add the same tag, and uh, then you get uh, uh, the, the right sentence tag. So these are really easy cases. And then the, I, I saw another case, which was, uh, I think it, it was also in your examples, in contrast, limited research has been conducted on N occultants. I think it was in the examples. And then I was really intrigued why this isn't captured. Uh, limited research, well, limit, I'm sure it is a keyword, research as well. So, but in the lexicon, you see that limited doesn't have a concept tag, but limit does. And why this is important, because in, in the Atenor output, that is in the, uh, well, I, may, I, I put here Atenor output, but this, what you see here, it is a mixture of Atenor and the Stanford parser, and the Stanford parser uh, uh, assigns features 
to lemmas, as we also add the features to lemmas. So it lemmatizes every word. But the Stanford parser didn't uh, uh, lemmatize limited as limit, but as an adjective limited. And limited is not in the lexicon. You see? So it is very easy. You just copy, you, 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 you just add a lemma limited because you have the lemma limit, but it will, will not match because the, because the Stanford parser gives limited as the lemma. And you see what the lemma is. You see here in the output, lemma limited. Uh, 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 among the features, you, you need to see in the Atener output for sin, because it, well, I, I, I can't ex uh, explain what exactly this is here now, but here you see a line that is sin, which, which is related to the lemma and the, the features of the lemma, and the lemma is limited. And if you see that the lemma is limited and it is not in the lexicon, you add it. And then you will have the right uh, tag, you see. Uh, new insight is provided as results confirm the if ah sorry it is not it is in contrast limited uh, I, I it is the next one actually sorry 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 I, I maybe I, uh, I, I I made a mistake ah no I made a mistake a copy paste mistake but believe me the sentence is is, uh, is uh, 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 the tagging is right. And then uh, there is a last, um, a last uh, case here that I showed. Here, new insight is provided that I was also very much surprised why it wasn't uh, uh, detected. I, I think it also comes from your examples. And then uh, here, you check the lexicons. The lemmas of all the words instantiating the concept tags have a, have a concept tag. New insight provided. They are part of the lexicon. But if you look at the Atenor, uh, uh, actually it is, it, well, it, it is Atenor that gives it like this, but it is the, the Stanford parser output. You see that new insight is tagged as a compound, a compound word, which, is, which it is not. New insight is not a, compact, a, a, compound, a compound noun. It is, it is an adverbial modifier dependency, but in itself, this is not a, a, a big problem, but this is not uh, correct. But if you look at the lemma of new, then you will see that it is not what we call normalized. It is taken as a, as, as a proper noun. It, it, but new is not a proper noun in this sentence. But I, I don't know why it is like this. You, you see, if, if it was zip, it, 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 this, this thing couldn't happen in zip. Uh, and and if there is a if if there is a problem like this, I could do something about it. But in the uh, Stanford parser, I have to do with the output it gives. So it gives new as a proper word, and it it it, it, it the lemma is new with a capital letter, which is not correct. And then I have to adapt. And if I want sentences like this to be tagged. I do something that is not very clean, but I, I, I don't have any other way of going about this. I add new to the lexicon as a lemma with a, with a capital letter, the same as, as new. And then I get the right uh, analysis. So you, 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 sometimes you have to investigate, sometimes the parser has problems. So if uh, so, and then I added the last one, uh, some best practices for managing the system. But I think we can. Uh, so if 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 you do develop the system, we can uh, uh, collect these best practices together, uh, like create a test corpus of a considerable size to be able to test the consequences of the new rules. This is very important. Uh, compare the output of the system with and without this change to see what changed in it, what changes it has induced. Uh, if you see unexpected output, you need to decide how to handle it. 
so it is not at all clear at first sight what has to be done. Uh, for example, word sense ambiguity may lead, lead, to, lead to wrong output. And in this case, you might want to implement disambiguation rules, which you cannot do right now. And, uh, and, and I think it is good to consider the existing system, existing system as a basis and for a new domain, uh, create specific files to keep the system modular. And then we can enrich it collectively. The, the corpus we have and the TAP infrastructure, um, along with the way that we're starting to write notebooks, should really help with this kind of approach, such that um, ideally we'd be able to create some notebooks where mm -hmm. um, if people had created new rules, then they could essentially run those rules um, alongside the existing ones. And yeah. get the output. So we yeah. can kind of do this on, in a very fast and iterative way. Um, yeah. Obviously need some setting up to get that right, but yes, um, it's one of the kind of exciting potentials of having that open corpus. Uh, yes. Yes, exactly, exactly, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, thank you, Agnes. Are there any any questions, um, Sophie, Shibani? Um, not right now. Um, I may have a few later on that I might want to email Agnes. So at the yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Yeah. Great. Okay. And now we have we have some insight into how we can start to um, modify the lexicons. Um, uh, which is which is great. Okay. All right. Um, we should wrap up there then. Uh, if there's no more questions. And thank you very much, Agnes. And um, I'll be in touch as we try and figure out how we might, you know, take this forward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm very much looking forward. But if 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 you, if you uh, so if you can tell me. Uh, do, do you know uh, when about what time you you, you can uh, you can see how how it goes forward uh, yeah as soon as I, as soon as I can uh, hopefully in the next next few weeks um, we're still waiting for for our project to officially get funded and stuff I mean it's just like the agreement hasn't been signed so mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've got LAC next week, so that's going to be kind of full on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so um, I'll be thinking about this basically for the next next couple of weeks and, and trying to get stuff in place so that we could learn more about this. So, you know, for the benefit of the others, we're looking at how we can set up a collaboration with Naver Labs uh, that will allow us to, you know, formalize the collaboration in a way that gives Agnes, uh, you know, um, an official project to be working on with us. Um, and I'm trying to figure yeah. out how, how we can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, okay. it, 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 it would be very helpful for me because, because, you know, I do it really, really, really with pleasure. I don't really care about this, but I myself, but, but, uh, <laughs> but, but still, since this time tracking is so important here, I need yeah. to show what I work on. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll I'll drop you a note to try and to discuss that further, and we can chat one on one further if we need to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay. And this is great, great. timing. This is great timing because on uh, on Monday, Shivani, Simon, and Sophie and Andrew are running a a tutorial all around tap, um, and so they're going in that much better prepared now than. <laughs> Than, the, than they were, so that's great. Thank uh, you. Great, 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 great. Good luck. And uh, well, um, uh, Simon, uh, we are going to catch up for for the corpus, maybe uh, after luck. After luck, after the yeah. start of the semester. Yeah. Okay. And Sophie, if you are interested in the, the uh, 
in, in the comparison with the yes. move analysis and step analysis. I think uh, when, when uh, our presentation is ready with uh, Elena, because with Elena we are going to uh, an applied linguistics conference to Chicago in, in three weeks, oh, cool. and we are going to present, present it together, and we plan to write an article about it. The, uh, uh, the, the theoretical things. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, and I, I can, uh, well, we will be able to present this to you as well and, uh, and we can uh, discuss about it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much and, and good luck for right. luck. Yes. <laughs> Have a good time. <laughs> bye, thank bye. You. bye bye. Bye bye. Bye for now then. Bye, I leave the meeting. Right, bye.